while search and recovery may not be an everyday activity for the emergency response unit here in Greenwich, the canines and police officers here are always prepared. Well, today we're conducting some joint training with the New England Canine Search and Rescue Unit. It's a volunteer organization, and we have dogs here from the uh, state of Connecticut and as far away as Rhode Island. And we have three uh, dogs and their handlers here, and they're specially trained uh, for um, body recoveries, cadaver dogs. We headed to Island Beach where the dogs Falcon, Ziva, and Max trained on the boat and on the shore. We're going to send the mannequin um, to simulate a body and then what will happen is we will conduct search we'll sink that down we have two of our public safety divers on board also police officers and they'll be in the water and we'll sink the mannequin down and then we'll put the dog on the, usually the bow of the boat the dogs are able to scent um, from sources that are deep under the water um, sometimes it's a lot easier to send a dog out on a boat to do scent work in an area that can be dangerous for divers if the current is very swift or if there's a lot of debris that could potentially injure the divers while they're down under. Um, and sometimes there are things that you just can't discern well on sonar. If you see it, um, something that looks human-like, it could be debris, it could be something else. Um, so the dogs are able to narrow down the search areas pretty significantly for the divers. We have to factor in things like water temperature and current and how the scent will travel through the water. Officers say training the dogs on the boat and in the water is different than training them on land. When we put the dogs on the boat, we actually take the ability away from the dogs to move on their own. So we actually have to become a team for the dog to realize that if you're moving on the boat, the boat will turn with you. And so that's really the hardest part of the training is to get that dog to realize that you're driving this boat and we're gonna, you're gonna find the odor when we communicate together. We train as much as we possibly can. We like to take advantage of as many joint trainings as we can get into. We trained with Stanford Fire Department dive team a couple of months ago. We're excited to be here in Greenwich. Um, we try to train with as many teams as will have us and just build that good working relationship. And while prime boating season may be over, there are things boaters need to remember if they go out in cooler weather. On a nice day like today, the water temperature is probably about 54 degrees and cold water is considered anything under 70 degrees. Um, so it, it's important to know that your survivability in this type of water is greatly reduced right now. And it's reduced, A, because of the cold, but also for the potential of someone to come upon you and help you. So what we try to instill upon the boaters a, always wear a life jacket. B, let somebody know where you're going and when you're expected to be back. And C, have a form of communications, uh, preferably a VHF radio. If we know where you are, if someone knows where you are, we can know where to come to help you. Reporting for the Greenwich Sentinel, I'm Quajerba Crawfee.